Nokia, Google Accepted to HTC and IM. Uh, Surya, uh, ESSEC, uh, MIM, and probably London Business School uh, to share their feedback. And I will ask you questions. Huh? So, of course, so the guests that I have today, Bupendra, you mm -hmm. all know Bupendra because he's your GMAT teacher, myself, Dr. Hubert, uh, Manavar PhD, uh, and uh, I give la lectures at ISB. So, uh, I will be at India Derabad uh, uh, Monday and Tuesday. Uh, so, uh, and uh, I've been working with Indian students uh, for the last two years, so uh, I understand the specificity of Indian students. Huh? As you can hear, you have a French accent, huh? uh, but uh, it's not an issue when you apply for top MBAs. Alors, basically, uh, the first thing that I want, that I want to ask you um, is that, uh, so basically, now in India, I have a majority of students who are applying for MIMs, or Master in Finance, okay? Uh, why so? Because we work with the Symbiosis, uh, Saint Xavier, uh, NMIMS, uh, Shishram, Shishram College, etc. And I've seen a lot of them want to apply for uh, for MIM. The problem that they have in general, it's always HEC, ICAD, LBS, ESSEC, and uh, and LSC Imperial. Okay, uh, that's for basically 60% of our students and the other 40% are Indian students who apply for MBA. And usually for the MBA, it's always, uh, most of the time, it's US MBAs. Alors, what have been the, the trends lately uh, in India? What have I got, what have I noticed? Alors, yes, so first trend, more students who decide to go for MIM right after the bachelor. Huh? They don't want to, get, to wait for two, three years complete an, uh, work and complete an MBA. And why so? Uh, Ariane will explain to us because we had, we had time to analyze that when we, we talked last, uh, last uh, September, October. Simply because they know that in India, uh, you have a lot of outsourcing. Okay? Uh, and uh, can you plug it in well, please? Uh, you, you have a lot of outsourcing. Do it well. Make sure that, uh, that it works. Alors, basically, seeing so many students, believe that uh, basically today it doesn't make much sense to stay uh, to stay in India, uh, get a uh, job as, as a, it is outsourced from the US. They prefer to say we go directly to London Business School, to HEC. Uh, I will work in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Europe or wherever in Europe or wherever in the US, gain more experience. And the objective, the final objective is always to do an MBA but they will apply for an MBA from India, huh? uh, from uh, Europe or from the US, and they know that from there, they will get, um, they will get a better MBA. Huh? Uh, I have, you see from Bupendra, I've noticed that I have outstanding students from India uh, who, have, who are IT graduates, uh, uh, MIT graduates, uh, Saint Xavier graduates, who have a 760, and who at the end get, uh, Darden, uh, Jew, Cornell, okay? This staff of, of profile, normally, uh, if you have work in Europe or in the US, you get work done, so you get what we call an M7, okay? But basically, can, can you share this, this approach, Ariane, because you have decided before doing the MBA to go for a master's. Can you share your approach, Ariane? Can you introduce yourself, by the way, and share this approach? Uh, because Hi, you start through India. Hi, guys. Yeah. My name is Ariane Kochiove. I currently work with... Uh, MBA Center, uh, MBA Center France, and also MBA Center Delhi. Um, I've been accepted onto some of the best business masters programs, namely HEC, MIM, ESEC Business School, MIM, and MIF, uh, London, London Business School, MFA, uh, Cornell, and Duke MMS Foundations of Business. And uh, uh, recently, I was recently uh, I got shortlisted. Uh, recently, I was shortlisted at Kellogg as well. So <clears throat> going forward, um, you know, Dr. Hubert just mentioned about this three degree approach, right? So as Indians, you know, we are an overrepresented community wherever we go, right? Uh, so there is, there is uh, to whichever country we go to, be it for our jobs or be it, be it, let's say for us, our higher studies and, uh, but when we, when we apply for MBA programs abroad, 
we face a lot of competition like recently we had a girl who scored a 780 on the gmat investment banker here in india and she she couldn't she she couldn't get uh, admitted to some of the best uh, you know mba programs in the us whereas she got she got a she got an admit at isb with a 100% scholarship so the question here is why did that happen because when you are directly applying for an mba you are not just uh, you are not just you know you are not just uh, fighting it out with other indians out there you know you are you are being compared you are being compared with the world's best students you know coming from diverse backgrounds and you know with all with rich vein of work experience and uh, you know even when it comes to opportunities uh, like uh e even when it comes to opportunities as indians you know um, majority of majority of the companies uh, majority of uh, majority of these uh, big four and mbbs look at india uh, look at look at india as a place to set up their back office and that's that's the reason why we are not primarily exposed to you know uh, the front office roles at a very young age even if we end up getting those jobs right? whereas whereas uh, whereas a european student or let's say an american student uh, or let's say probably uh, uh, somebody studying in singapore uh, definitely gets exposed to all these roles at a very young age for example my friend harsh uh, who went to kings college london for his bachelor's he is already a consultant at a consultant at ui having graduated this year uh, bachelor's degree from acl in international relations so these are the kind of profiles that we sort of encounter um, you know because it it is a general perception that you get a very high gmat score or a very high gre score and you know you and and you'll just get them but that is so not true i mean business school be it a business school or, or like any good university they are going to look at every single component of your application and your application is compared with the app uh, with the entire applicant pool so it's always better as an indian if you are if you are planning to get an mba in the long run to go for a masters first now, now the question arises why masters i i, I mean i'm uh, i think i'm uh, i think i made i made it pretty clear why why not directly an mba and now i'm going to now i'm going to talk about why a masters first see if we look at see uh, we are indians and we love to talk about money so i'll 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 also talk about money here straight away if we look at roi you know uh, if we look at roi um, hec costs around 36 lakhs indian rupees i'm talking about the fees the same uh, the same the same at london business school the same at isec business school so and uh, uh, and basically basically you basically when you pay 36 lakhs you know for your masters uh so you are paying 36 lakhs for your masters let's say just the fees and let's say for mba the fees uh, the fees is around 1.2 cr so there is a massive difference here and now now i'll talk about the roi if you if you are somebody who's going to let's say an hec or an isec or let's say you're going to uh, a london business school uh, like other top business masters like let's say mim or mif business analytics or data analytics uh, or like data analysis programs you can easily get a job in cities like london in amsterdam and also in the middle east is becoming a very popular destination now uh, you can if you if you like let's say are studying at insead or let's say you're studying at lbs getting getting into uh, getting as a junior associate uh, getting placed as a junior associate at mckinsey or any mbb consulting it, it's not going to be very very difficult because general tendency uh, because 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 generally uh, generally these are the job profiles of students uh, after their mims and if you guys are aware of the salaries that a mckinsey or a goldman sachs or a morgan stanley pays to their ib analysts or to or to their or, or to their uh, or to their uh, uh, junior associates in consulting it is already too much you could you could easily expect to uh, you you can easily you know you are spending around 36 lakhs you can easily expect to make just the double if not less 
but when it comes to the mba program uh, you know uh, let's say you are spending 2 crore all inclusive nothing is guaranteed that you know you're going to end up getting a 2 crore salary right away even if it is hard so, so it's, it's exactly that so you see one day i took the example of two students uh, alberto and uh, i forgot one two two from spain and i explained very well that Basically, Alberto went to London Business School, MIM. After London Business School, he worked for Deloitte Monitor. So he graduated when he was 22 years old. He worked for Deloitte Monitor, and after that, he joined uh, Oliver Wyman in Dubai. Uh, when Alberto was 28, he bought a flat without a loan in Madrid. When his friend, uh, it was Cesar, or I forgot the name of the friend, went to to learn to insert mba uh, he made a loan of 100000 euros so one uh, had uh, a job at oliver wyman and bought a flat cash and will have his mba paid by the way by oliver wyman the other one was working for accenture that doesn't pay for mba and uh, and uh, only has debts okay so basically it's so that if you go for the master at a young age, okay, the booster will be uh, at the age of 22. Okay, if you go for an MBA, you're going to stay in India. Salaries are pretty low at the, after right after graduation, uh, and you have to wait uh, to get an MBA to make money because you you live elsewhere. Uh, don't forget as well that you, if you London Business School graduate, if you're an MIM, you'll work for a top consulting company. And they will pay for the MBA. Huh? Okay. So basically, the MBA, the MIM, is the guarantee that you get a top uh, MBA. Huh? Okay. It's true that for Indians, you have to see. I have the, the statistics from HEC. Fifty percent of the HEC Paris. Fifty percent of the applicants are Indian. Okay. It's very funny because last time I was with uh, Aman, who works with us, and uh, they told him you need a 730, 740. Okay. And he was surprised to see that I have a student from Ivory Coast, so it's a country in Africa, who got who has an interview with a 560. Imagine 560 when they ask 730 to an Indian. Okay. And of course, me was very strange because being French, I have a son, by the way, who went to HEC. Uh, for him, it was difficult because it's a different type of program. Uh, for me, HEC MBA was really not a difficult program to, to get. Okay. And then I found out working with Indian is very difficult. Why? Because they have fifty percent of the applicants that are Indian. Okay, you can you imagine uh, how easy it is for them? Last year, I had students who got rejected, not even in an interview at HEC with a seven thirty. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Now the first thing is that I will I will consider if I were you a sort of double approach. If you still 20, 21, 22, consider that. Then the second thing that I've noticed in uh, in India. Is, uh, is is the profile. Uh, basically, what I've noticed is that Indians have usually two weaknesses in their application. Uh, so, lack of international exposure, okay? Uh, most of them have never been abroad. And I understand at the same time, see me, for instance, when I used to live in, in Belgium, in Brussels, I would take my car and taking the train, you know, you can put your, your car in the train, okay? Uh, I would be in London in two hours, I will be in the north of France in one hour, and I will be in Germany taking my car in two hours, and in the Netherlands in one hour. Okay. So of course, when you come from a small small countries like European countries, it's easy to be international because first they favor that. So we have a program called uh, Erasmus program, so we can go uh, for six months abroad. And second of all, uh, the countries are small. So for instance, me to give you an ID. Before uh, starting my master, I went six months for an exchange program at Oxford. Okay, and during my master at Sciences Po, I went four months at GFK Harvard. Okay, so which means that when I applied, I already had Oxford, I, I had Sorbonne, Oxford, uh, Sciences Po Paris, and Harvard on my resume. Okay, imagine. Okay, and I didn't do anything. I just uh, I just cross uh, cross something. I had good grades, and they said me, okay, but 
next month you go there say, okay and for me it was normal going to oxford or to going to harvard was something very normal being french okay and of course then after that when i traveled in china in india uh, in uh, in, uh, in, I don't know, in Russia, in Japan, I found out that, of course, it was a privilege, okay? The second type of, of program of crime that Indians have is that, unfortunately, India is still an, an outsourcing con country. For instance, when I, I have a son, went to a uh, second son, went to ESCP, he did the MIM there, and it, uh, he works for JP Morgan in London, okay? And he told me that in India, they outsource, so they ask them to do PowerPoint, they ask them to do some research, but the, the business is done in um, uh, in London, okay, for JP Morgan, okay? Uh, so, for instance, my son, after already six months of work experience, he was already de dealing multi-billion uh, m and okay? Mm -hmm. He is in the healthcare sector. And he was already talking to the CFO of Roche, uh, of, of a big, big uh, pharmaceutical company, okay? And he, he, he was... Uh, my son is born in, uh, in uh, 1997. So yes, at that time, uh, when, when he started to work, yes, he was 23, 24 years old, okay? If you're 23, 24 years old and you work for JP Morgan, you will not work as the CFO of uh, Roche, of a big pharmaceutical company. You agree, uh, Ariane? You yes, agree? certainly. Huh? Yeah, yeah. You, will, you, will, you will make some research, but you have to see that you, for instance, Ariane, if you go to HEC and you work for JP Morgan, you will deal directly with the CFO of big companies, okay? Yeah. You'll have an exposure. So, of course, imagine when a French guy is going to say, when I was with the CFO of whatever, uh, dealing a $2 billion project, and he applies to Harvard, and you say, I was making PowerPoint, uh, uh, it's not the same, huh? okay? So, it's okay, one has a leadership experience, the other one doesn't have any. So, basically, you need to, uh, to work on that lack of international exposure and leadership okay, uh, at work. So basically, since leadership at work is very difficult, plus you live in a country where uh, they don't really trust the young, so what can you do to develop leadership? So basically, you have to be involved in NGOs, so you, have be, you have to be involved in projects. You have noticed that Indians are socially uh, aware, okay, and they do many things for the others. It's true that it's, it's in your DNA. And also, uh, but I don't know, work with friends who have, uh, who have startups. You can say, you know, on weekends, I work with friends who have startups, and that's where I develop my, my leadership uh, skills, okay? So now, uh, what do I advise to improve the profile uh, internationally, okay? Uh, basically, I say, uh, learn a second language. You know, uh, I, I'm at the Hans Hotel. That's where I stay. So I'm near the Goethe Institute, okay? But I go to the Goethe Institute uh, to learn German, okay? Uh, go to the Instituto Cervantes to learn Spanish, go to Alliance Francaise to learn, uh, to learn French, etc. Then also, there's something to do. Uh, if you go on Coursera, I've noticed that on Coursera, they have, they have uh, a lot of, of classes. They give a lot of classes. Huh? Uh, that's something you should do as well. Uh, and you have classes from Yale, from Harvard, from LSE. Uh, take something like this. It will give you a more international exposure. Okay? And if you're still young, uh, go for uh, for study for uh, summer schools. Okay, uh, can you tell us, uh, Argan? Uh, uh -huh. Because I met you when you were twenty years old. Yeah. What did I advise you to make you more international? Can you tell us about the HEC summer school uh -huh. that you have okay. attended? Yeah. yeah. Sure. So, uh, you know, I've been traveling abroad from a very young age because I was a professional cricketer playing cricket in England and also in Sri Lanka, also in India. But Dr. Hubert uh, told me that you know. Uh, when it comes to cricket, yeah, it's fine. They, they are going to like it, but you need to be more international. And how can you do that? It can be, uh, it can only be done if you like attend a summer program. And this is something that a lot of Indians do if they sort of want to bridge the gap between, you know, uh, them and their dream schools. Because international exposure, even though they don't mention it on their websites, but it is a silent prerequisite. I mean, if you wish to study at, let's say, an HEC or a London Business School or an ESEC. If you have international exposure, it definitely uh, gives you that edge. I mean, it is not, uh, and it can, it, and international exposure is not just constrained to, let's say, summer schools. I will talk about my HEC summer school experience, but yes, um, you can get, you can become internationally, uh, uh, you know, you uh, acclimatized uh, 
you know via variety of uh, via, via, there are a plethora of options available for the same you know you could volunteer you know with isec you can do anything you know you can sort of uh, take up uh, remote internships working uh, working with an international team that is also possible these days so basically there are a lot of things that you can do because i understand summer school uh, summer school uh, summer school is an expensive deal but yes if you kind of have the time and also uh, you know if you can uh, afford a summer school before your masters then definitely you must go for a summer school why a it allows you to a it uh, allows you to you know get an idea of uh, uh, of your uh, of your time at uh, of your time at uh, uh, you know uh, uh, a non indian uh, a non indian business school you just get used to uh, the settings there and you know you are you you are exposed to a very you know uh, a, a very diverse uh, a very internationally diverse set of students so it allows you to learn uh, and also share knowledge and if the summer program is awarding you grades like hec did so uh, when 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 schools award you grades you know you already you know just just say to yourself that yes my study abroad journey has already commenced once you have the grades because uh, you know uh, for example i scored a 4 on 4 at hec so when i when, so whichever business school i apply to they know that yes he you know uh, uh, he is now used to the european method of teaching or like the english method of teaching and he can and he can gel pretty well so this is the thing and they also allow you to network a lot so uh, you know from uh, from what i recall uh, uh, during my stint at hec um i got you know uh, i i got a chance to experience uh, uh, i i got a, i got a chance to experience investment banking and pri private equity as a student because they used real world case studies and they used to call you know current cfos and current uh, investment banking analysts and current mna analysts as guest lecturers and that is something that you know we are not exposed to here so apart from you know apart from apart from just international exposure it also enhances your knowledge base and it helps you a lot when you sit for your interviews because whenever they see that on your profile that you know you have gone to xyz summer school they are definitely going to ask you questions uh, you know uh, about uh, about uh, about your experience and if you are able to elaborate they'll be they, they'll be mighty impressed so you know enhancement of knowledge base you get international grades your journey commences you you met a diverse set of students and it is also a chance for universities to get to know you you know universities use this to screen their prospective students as well and there have been instances you know dr hubert will elaborate more uh, that whenever whenever there has uh, you know whenever hec or like let's say any summer pro, uh, any 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 big uh, business school that has a summer program if they like a student uh, uh, if they like if they like a student because they keep evaluating they'll take uh, they'll offer them to interview right after the summer school so it's it, it's a it's a um it's it, it what happened i think hubert has left the meeting let me just let me just check let me just check with him once i think there is some network issue so yeah i mean this was my this you know this is what i did this this is basically what i did at hec and it helped me tremendously to finally get an admit at hec which is which like they say is the harvard for masters pro at hello. least yeah um, hello aryan are you with us yeah 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 okay so it says yes I, I agree with you uh by the way in this center would organize uh i will ask bupendra if, I will I will tell more about the program. But we organize a uh, we'll offer a diploma uh, this year, so you will have a, a tour in uh, in Europe. So uh, we'll visit uh, Madrid. In Madrid, you'll have classes with IE, ESAD, AIA, and uh, IEC. In Paris, we'll visit uh, the HEC, the ESEC, the SCP, uh, Sciences Po Campus. 
Emil will visit the EDEC and Schema campus. And then there's an issue with visas, but we'll have uh, classes with uh, Warwick, LSC, Imperial, uh, uh, UCL, uh, in uh, online, because we cannot visit uh, England, okay? And then there will be, uh, on the last day, one-on-one -on -one with all these schools. So with the 15 schools, and then you receive a, a sort of diploma, diploma uh, that will give you, that we say, that mention that you follow a sort of mini MIM, uh, visiting, uh, having classes with the top 15 best business schools. Huh? That, that's the type of thing that, we, that should help you a lot, huh? okay? But you get uh, interviews, not just with one school, like uh, Ariane got with HZ, but you get interviews with 15 schools, okay? Which is, which is a big, big plus, huh? okay? Alors, basically, um, I didn't have time to ask you questions, uh, uh, Bupendra, but you, uh, with GMAT Insight, um, can you please tell us about your students? So, uh, do they want to study in Europe or in the US or in India? Uh, they are looking for MIM or they are looking for MDS. Can you please tell us a bit who, who are your students and what you do yes. with them? Yeah. See, the major number of students that we have are generally the ones who are uh, interested for the MBA degree and not mm -hmm. exactly for the master's program. So, that is one of the points where I would rather try to divert the focus a little because most students that we want uh, that we actually want to send to are the ones who oh. are going for the MBA program. That's number one. Okay. Secondly, secondly, uh, we also get students for MIM program, uh, oh. but the number of students of such type are always less. Right. Yeah. Therefore, therefore, it's not that we will always discount this kind of a possibility. But for example, I mean, keeping in mind the students who have been able to join the class today, I think if we have two students who would be interested for the master's program and there are more people who have more questions to ask and they are looking for the MBA program, definitely. Right. So I was also looking forward to several insights from you. If you could just share for the people uh, who have significant experience, who have some problem with GMAT school and uh, how exactly can they look forward to the schools like in Seattle, HEC Paris, mostly the schools that are based in Europe and the decent schools, of course. Okay, that's all. And, and tell me, uh, Bupendra, you students, they go uh, to the US or they go to Europe? Many the US? Many US? Are the students, see, we get students which are open to the location. So a number of students, in fact, we actually recommend that the students choose US as a destination if they are from the technical background, because there, the number of companies and the opportunities available will be in plenty. Right. But for the MIM programs, for the master's program, I generally recommend that they should go to Europe. The reason is that most of the programs in, I mean, European programs are the best programs when it comes to the master's program. And uh, in terms of MBA, although the target always remains on USB schools, but a large number of students have also been interested in ISB. Therefore, a very good number of students also look, for, look forward to how exactly can we convert the schools like ISB. And also some students who are who have some inclination towards the finance background, they are also open to the location like UK, for example, LBS, Imperial schools of that sort. Okay. Right. But primarily, it's, it's I mean, I would uh, say that 80% uh, of our students are the ones who have MBA in their objectives, and only 20% of them would have the objective of going for the master's program immediately after undergraduation. Okay. Now, basically, so it's good that you that you tell me that. So the first, we have to see uh, why is it most interesting to go as an Indian. Probably as a European, it would be a different story. Uh, as a European, you have interest in staying in Europe, okay? Unless you go to Harvard or Stanford or Wharton. Uh, uh, otherwise, uh, stay in Europe. In Seattle, the uh, LBS are more than, more than, more than enough. And uh, it's true that I believe that for an Indian, it makes a lot of sense to go to the US, okay? Now, uh, for which reason? Uh, no language barrier. The market is very dynamic. You have a lot of successful Indians, and I think that the the, the perception that uh, Americans have from Indians is positive. Uh, by the way, it's funny because I was in the in the plane in my plane. I was with an Indian from Bangalore, uh, with a mechanical engineer. Uh, we then got the green card to work in the US, and his two kids went to Georgia Tech. And they are also mechanical engineers. So basically they know that Indians are good at math, they are good at engineering, 
and so the, the perception is extremely positive. Mm -hmm. huh? you, you know that you have a lot of CEOs of, uh, of uh, American companies who are now uh, Indians. Huh? So basically, they, they have broken through. Uh, so there is very positive image. So then I will say that um, the, the, my experience, uh, and I would be happy to share that with uh, Rupendra, uh, is that of course many uh, are targeting the M7. So you know what is M7? So it is Stanford, Chicago, Kellogg, MIT, uh, Columbia, uh, Harvard, huh, basically, and, uh, and, uh, and I forgot one. So that's that's for the that's for the M7. Okay. Uh, so we have, of course, it's a dream school. Uh, unfortunately, uh, many, and I'm talking of the top scorer, I mean, uh, talking of people who score 7, 50 and plus, most of the time, they finish more at uh, Taper, uh, Duke, Darden, and Michigan. Huh? That's basically the school that I've noticed with which it works pretty well. Okay? And then now there's a new trend that I've noticed. It's the trend of uh, yeah. we're going to go, we're going to ask for GMAT waivers. Okay, and uh, we ask for STEM program. Okay, so uh, I'm sure that you know what is a STEM program. So a STEM program will give you a three of visa post uh, MBA. And uh, I have so now I, I tend to have a lot of students who say, okay, uh, don't uh, I don't want a top school. I want uh, something that is good uh, with a GMAT waiver uh, and a STEM program. Okay, uh, by the way. Uh, this year, we have a guy called Walid who got uh, MIT. In the, in the interview is MIT, we don't have the final answer with the GMAT waiver. So you can even get MIT being Indian with the GMAT waiver. Okay. Um, so we said that the advantage of the US is that you have many schools, you have the same programs, the job market is uh, is very is very good. Ah. I would say that, of course, when you study an MBA in Europe, if you, you have to go in the top five. Okay. So basically, IAC, HEC, uh, I don't know, IMD, SEAD, uh, LBS, okay? If you don't get uh, top five, it's difficult. Whereas I would say that the top 50 in America are very good and they will give you access to top jobs, okay? So it means that if you go to America, you have much more choice, huh? okay? And, uh, and a more dynamic job market, okay? So that's something, and I've noticed, uh, I've noticed what it gives. Uh, what, what is your experience, uh, Bupendra? Where, where do you students study? They study in M7, they study in, uh, more like in the, the top 15, top 20? Uh, uh, yes. What's your experience? I'll tell you, uh, usually the students, if they make it to any of the top 50 B schools as per the QS ranking, I think they are happy. Yeah. Okay. Right? Because, yeah. yes, because the top 50 schools globally that I'm talking about, so in that we have some schools from UK, some schools from Europe as well, so that includes. So the top 50 schools are the major target for the students, unless the student has willingness to go to Australia or Canada. Right? Yeah. So let's just keep that, that, that segment slightly aside. And then let's focus on that. How exactly can we work on the top 50 B schools globally with low GMAT or no GMAT? These two things. Hello. Uh, yeah. So, so as, 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 as I told you, uh, I would say that the, the first thing that we advise, we tell them, uh, we tell them to apply uh, to many schools. Now, I don't know what is your experience, but Judy, uh, the Indian student, we, we ask them to apply to. Uh, Eight, 8 to 12 schools, huh? okay? Uh, because we never know what can happen. Uh, of course, if they have a dream, it's good, but they have to take uh, realistic targets. Huh? You, 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 you want to go to Columbia, Chicago, uh, and you also have to consider uh, Indiana, Tuck, uh, uh, Duke, Cornell, uh, Taper, Michigan, okay? And also, uh, as, as you said, the top 50, fin, fin, basically uh, there. Okay, uh, and you have to be ready that, uh, yes, uh, already getting the top 50 is enough. And also what I tell them in order to increase their chance of success, we also tend to focus on STEM programs huh? a lot, because uh, but you have a three year visa, and if you can, if you have a three year visa, after that you can uh, stay more easily, and you get, you, get, uh, you, you get the visa to stay, huh? okay? That's, uh, that's what I suggest. To basically apply to eight to twelve schools, uh, make make a, make a good list. Um, 
the way the way the way uh, we'll work with you group and drive is that we have an history of the of the profile so we, we perfectly know how such profile what they usually do huh? okay yeah yeah so uh, a guy was with an analyst was a 720 you know where he can go yeah sorry Bupendra. yeah yeah no no so basically uh and you see there are like two or three students here that i see who have very peculiar background and very peculiar Hello. story yeah. and uh, and it would also be really great if you could just enlighten what how exactly their approach should be right okay so let me just so what, what you can do now we can we can we can ask them questions uh uh one-on-one -on -one, and then i will send you a, an answer before 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 yes. we have the one-on-one -on -one next sunday huh? so don't forget yes, that yes, next sunday on the events there will be a one-on-one on, -one on connot place and of course bupendra bupendra will, will be will be there hello the first one is uh, nirma so nirma can, can you introduce yourself in 30 seconds mm -hmm. and tell me about your, your target schools hello nirma Nirmal? Where is Nirmal? Uh, Baradwaj. Nirmal? Nirmal. Hello? Hi. Hi, Nirmal. Uh, Nirmal. So, Nirmal, can you, can you talk? Can you just uh, uh, introduce can you, yourself? Huh? yourself? Nirmal, can you introduce yourself? Uh, and, uh, yeah. Nirmal? Hello. Where is Hello. Nirmal? Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, Nirmal. So, who are you yeah. uh, in 30 seconds and what schools are you targeting? Hello? Okay, so my name is Nirmal. And I am an engineer by background, and I am basically a civil engineer. And my target schools are basically those schools. Go ahead, yeah. Hey, pardon? Actually, basically, I am a civil engineer, and I am working in a PSU. So my target schools, target based schools, are basically those colleges which give me the ample opportunity after doing MBA uh, to just uh, look into only in my specific domains like tunnel engineering okay so after co completing mba i have to join only specific into my field so so you want to work in civil engineering after the mba that's what you yes. want to do you want to stay in the same thing yeah probably yeah. probably you change your mind huh, after the mba but that's something else and what are the schools that you're targeting have you taken the gmat uh, nirmal no, you, I, you have already some GMAT score? Right, right now, I am not uh, giving the GMAT exam. I am just planning okay. to give it in the next month. Okay. But when you take a yes. test, uh, what, what score do you get when you take a test? You get 700, 750? Because the score that you get now is going to be pretty close to the score that you get next month. Huh? Okay. Currently, so I am just preparing for GMAT. Test or not? No, no. I am currently, I am just preparing for GMAT. I am not giving any kind of okay. exams. Well, let's imagine that you... That you get a 700 plus. Bupendra, what, what score do you think that uh, Nirmal will get because he's your student? What, what score do you think that he will get? Uh, <laughs> Actually, I I think he should be getting a score in the range between 650 and 700. Okay. Yeah, okay, it will be between 60. So, uh, if you can if you can show Bupendra that you can something better. And what are the schools that you have in mind, uh, Nirmal? What, what uh, MBAs uh, have you got in mind? What what name can come to your mind? See, uh, uh, see uh, basically we haven't discussed quite a lot about his priorities and what exactly are the locations that he would be willing to go. For example, if he is open to Canada, I think I would just suggest that he should maybe apply to two or three schools there. For example, Lotman is there, Ivy is there, and Shulik is there. Where Shulik yeah. is realistic, Lotman will be slightly ambitious. Right. Similarly, if we go towards U.S. side, then in U.S. he can just maybe look forward to us some schools such as Foster Business School, and uh, he can also look at uh, Marshall uh, and uh, UCLA Anderson. So these are yeah. two or three top schools that he can look at U.S. side. When it when we go to Europe side, I think I.E. said these will be some decent base schools where he has good potential to convert because he has some some good accolades as well coming from the government of india and he has to an extent a very good exposure within india good experience okay but tell me us with the he broke up for 30 seconds what are the schools that you had for him in the us in in us i said foster business school is one uh you uh usc marshall and yeah. ucla anderson okay and maybe ucla yes with a 650 uh 
you will not work, huh? 700, uh, they ask for, uh, they ask for more, huh? No, actually uh, their average score is like 690 approximately. Okay. Yes. Scully, Scully uh, probably, uh, I, it's not, a, it's not a bad school, but maybe it can get better. So of course, Bupendra has made, has made a good analysis of what you can do. And when do you intend to, to apply? It is January, gen, between January and March, when do you intend to apply? He will apply in round three, of course. And uh, I think this year only round three. If he doesn't make it to the school in round three, then he'll consider applying next year yeah. in the early world round. By the way, that, that's something that, that, that I suggest. Uh, that's something that I suggest is that uh, well, for the US, it's complicated. But if you have uh, Europe in mind, you can still apply in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in March. Huh? It can still work. A student last year accepted to IAC and we applied in March. Okay. Right. Um, so yes. So basically, uh, Nimal, uh, well, yeah, your profile uh, is good. Of course, try to get more than seven hundred. Huh? Okay. Because uh, because for Indians, it's, it's quite competitive. Uh, uh, even uh, Rotman would be difficult with a six fifty seven hundred. So yes, uh, Scully, uh, uh, I don't know, HEC Montreal, uh, Concordia, uh, probably uh, even University of British Columbia. With a 650, 700 would be would be difficult, huh? Okay, to get. Uh, so yes, I suggest that first you, you get the best possible GMAT, uh, and then you apply on round three. You have nothing to lose in Europe. Yes, you can you can target uh, ZAD, IE, maybe Rotterdam School of Management, uh, Bocconi, and also the German schools huh? like VAU, ASMT. That can work. A student from India accepted with a 650 at the SMT. Huh? Uh, now, 650, 700, no, you will not get HEC, you will not get uh, IAC, uh, you will not get uh, INSEAD Research Corps huh? because uh, you have uh, outstanding competitors. Huh? Okay. Uh, what about you? So now there's Arshit. Arshit, uh, who are you? Can you tell me more about yourself, Arshit? Anyway, I will meet you next Sunday as well. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Arshit, uh, what is your background? Uh, your uh, target score. Yeah. yeah, yeah, please. Hi, hi, Dr. Uh, Dr. Hubert. I uh, am I audible, first of all? Yes, yeah, yeah, you yeah. are. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, great. So, I am an architect. I passed out in 2018. After that, I worked in an architecture design consultancy for two years. And then I joined a political consultancy. So, mm -hmm. I've been uh, involved in this uh, called political uh, aid or political consultancy for last two, two and a half years. And I have a volunteering experience with a social impact foundation, which basically works for development of educational and healthcare infrastructure in rural and hilly areas in India and Himachal Pradesh, like mostly the hilly states. And um, like I have like a state state level medal in a martial arts sport and uh, like have a, like like some some national level awards also in design and uh, architecture and uh, yeah so like Hello? this this is my profile okay and have you taken the gmat uh or no. have you taken tests yeah uh no i haven't taken the gmat yet. What, what's called you see what's called you see it will get uh upendra uh Arshit. what do you think i think Hello? he is in the same range as Nemal was he should, what score do you see he will get on the GMAT? He, he, the, this, uh, this Archit also should be getting a score in the range of 650 to 700. He has to be a little more consistent though, but he should be able to fall it within this range. Okay. By the way, Archit, uh, maybe there's something else that you should, uh, that you should consider. Okay. Uh, they are, they are also master in public administration. Okay. For which the, the GMAT is less important. Okay. And okay. uh, Columbia uh, have uh, something, uh, Harvard has, has a plan with uh, Harvard GFK. Uh, if I were you, uh, I would uh, I would consider the two, okay? And it's much easier to get a master in public administration than an MBA. And then if you want to work, for instance, in a political consultancy or make a switch after that, that's something that, uh, that you should really consider, okay? You can also have like double degree, okay? Uh, okay. That, that can work. So. Uh, consider consider so um, uh, such programs. And how old, how old are you, Archie? You are 28, 29? How old are you? Yeah, yeah, I'm 28. Yeah. Okay. So yes. Uh, so go go for it. Huh? So basically, I will meet you ne next Sunday. 
but okay. he could be could consider of course MBA uh, and also a master in public administration from Harvard uh, from Harvard from uh, Columbia and they have they have pool and it is a bit less selective to go there and believe me if you have the Columbia name or the Harvard name on your on your CV uh, you get the top job huh? okay uh okay. McKinney, etc they, they they recruit people from Harvard JFK okay uh, He's in uh, in the US even so guide who had like an LLM and we could get uh, McKinsey with a uh, one year degree in law but since they had uh, Berkeley or Harvard they had interviews and they, they got job offers huh? okay so that's right. something Consider sometimes uh, a different, uh, a different approach. Can you put your you plate somewhere else? Yeah. Uh, so that's that's something I, I would discuss with you. And the problem that I see, uh, open is that these, these students they need uh, they need much, much better GMAX. Huh? Uh, if they want yeah. to target top top uh, US business schools, they need okay. very very good GMAT. And then of course, but they will get a top fifty. Huh? Uh, but uh, me, I had, a, for instance, a student last year uh, from Morocco who got Harvard with a 670. Huh? Okay. Uh, bon, she was from Morocco, it's possible. Okay. Uh, as an Indian, uh, it's about, huh? okay. Uh, where, else, where else is there? After that, I see Dhruv. So, Dhruv, can you tell us more about yourself, Dhruv? Hello? Hi, hi, Dr. Hubert. Uh, I'm audible. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay. So, uh, I'm Drew. Uh, I've done my income that's by a uh, bachelor's in commerce. I graduated 2016. I'm currently 27. Now, uh, I used to work with, I've done uh, consultancy with EY on okay. some young for two years. And then I started my own business with my brother. It is a which company was business. it? Which company uh, was on, it? Ernst Young, EY. Okay, EY, okay. Yeah, so that was for two years, and then I shifted out of that. And uh, currently, I'm running my own business with my brother. It's a patisserie. Uh, basically, we're into cakes and pastries. Okay. So um, I was planning to do my MBA. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot seem to crack the GMAT. I've given it multiple times. Uh, I can't seem to score more than a 550. Okay. Uh, and that's a very big problem. So. Uh, I'm trying to go to the US for my MBA, but I don't know how to cross this hurdle now because I really don't have a GMAT score, which is why. So, so, so what, what we'll do with you, uh, Groove, uh, yes. we'll, we'll apply to, we'll ask for a GMAT waiver, huh? Upendra. So we'll ask yes. for a GMAT waiver, uh, we'll see who gives you a GMAT Kubert. waiver, Kubert. and then we'll Kubert. apply by the way. Yeah. Uh, can, it, uh, can I ask you something? Because I've gone through the GMAT waiver, and the GMAT waiver yeah. is very clear yeah. that you have to have something to show that your quantitative skills are at par with you not giving the GMAT, right? So there's yeah. a specific reason which, which they ask what is the what have you done quantitatively that your skill set uh, is there that you can get a waiver on the GMAT. I don't, I, I don't see myself having uh, that particular quantitative skill set, which I, I've not done a, I've not just done a CFA or a CA or any quant based uh, course. So that, that's my question. How do I go about with that? Yeah, but you, you have, you have what you have a become. What have you got? You have a become. I, yeah. I have a become. I have a become. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then there's always the opportunity, maybe on Coursera, uh, to do a, a class in linear in. A, algorithmics, uh, linear algebra. Uh, yeah, uh, I would suggest that you do something like that, that you, you follow a class, uh, a math class. Okay? okay. You go on Coursera and you, fo you follow a math class there. Okay? Uh, but... Like uh, statistics, uh, linear algebra, trigonometric, etc. On Coursera, you can follow math classes. Okay? And that's okay. something that you can put in your extra training. Hello? Yes, uh, I'm listening. I'm listening. Yeah, uh, that's something that we can do. And uh, yes, Mumbai, well, yes, after that, if you get the chance waiver, you can apply to Ohio State. Uh, you can apply to Ohio State, to Simon, uh, to, uh, to maybe to Forbam. There's also another option if your GMAT is a bit low. You can also try to take the EA as well, okay? Because the EA is a bit more generous. And maybe you can convert the EA into a score like. Uh, Imagine that you get the 155 on the executive assessment test, then they can convert that into a 62630, which open the doors uh, to schools like uh, yes, like like Fordham. Uh, the, can, the executive assessment test is a solution as well. 
du titre qui y est Boupendra euh, at uh, Gmat Insight. Allô Allô Am I audible Yeah, you are. Allô Yeah, uh, baby. Uh, Boupendra, you teach uh, the executive assessment test at uh, Gmat Insight Yes, yes, yeah? we do. We do. In fact, uh, about Joke, let me also add, he is, he is planning to take GRE, and I think he is doing fairly well in GRE mock test at least, and we are expecting his score. Okay. So he can be a score better. Huh. Yeah. And, uh, and we are expecting his score should be on the minimum side 320, which we are just pushing so that it can reach up to a level of 325 or so, because if that happens, then I think he will once again have good chances. Okay. Uh, yes, the GRE, of course, because there's an issue with the conversion, no, you, can get, uh, yeah. you can get 40 points, you see, Bupendra, you can get 40, maybe maximum 50 points more. And right? once you convert the GRE into a GMAP, but it's very difficult to get, uh, to get, uh, um, but you, he's not going to go from uh, 550 to 750, huh? for an equivalent. So from what he has to, uh, to a 335, huh? but, uh, of course, it can make sense. Uh, my piece of advice would be that you switch for the EA and you apply for school that accept the EA, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, because the I don't think that he will, the improvement on the GRE will, will be stellar. Andrew, mm -hmm. okay? And you want to send your application when in this January? When you want to send the application? This January. Hello? This January. Correct. This January. This January. Huh? Okay. Yes. So you have to wrap it up. Huh? Uh, so then, uh, there is, uh, who else is, is with us? Uh, anyway, we'll see you uh, with, with Bupendra next, next Monday, next uh, Saturday. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I spoke already to, to Arshit, uh, Arshit, Ariane, Bupendra, Dhruv, uh, Gorav. Can you tell us more about yourself, Gorav? Hello? Yeah. Hi, 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 doctor. Uh, doctor, so I have done so Gorav, my. So, who are you, Gorav? Hello? Yeah. Uh, am I audible? Yes, God of you are. Of course. Yeah. So that the internet is not... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I have done my undergraduation in real estate. I have done BBA in real estate. Yeah. And then I have uh, four and a half years of experience in real estate. Uh, my last role has been the CEO of uh, 4 lakh square feet commercial office asset where I was heading uh, a 4 lakh square feet asset. Uh, in Noida. Okay. And uh, uh, Bupendra, is GMAT score? What do you think about the GMAT score? What, what, what score do you think that you will get? Gaurav, it is too early to actually say anything about him because he has not even completed the whole syllabus. Hmm? So, so, yes, right now I think we are not in position to comment because unless we see at least one mock test, I think only then I'll be able to say something. Okay. And, yeah. and when do you want to do your MBA, Gaurav? You want to do it in uh, September 2023, September 24? When, when is the deadline? Yeah, you? so I am now targeting to apply for fall 24. So September Sorry, 24. So, so 24, huh? Yes? Yeah. Sorry, there yeah. was, a, there was a, that. So it means that you have so you have some time. It means if you, the idea would be, that, would be that you get your GMAT at the latest in June, so that you have July, August, uh, September to write your application and, and, uh, and apply to, to run to run one. Huh? Okay, you agree? Okay. Alors, yeah, yeah. <coughs> sorry, what else can I say? Bon, ben, basically, as you know, uh, the GMAT is key, huh? uh, but uh, as you see, uh, you have to talk to, to Bopendra, uh, and depending on what you do, uh, switch to the GRE switch for the EA and see which one allows you to get to get the best possible score huh? okay uh, for instance I have a girl uh, she's not from India she's from uh, Spain but well who has uh, received invitation for uh, Stanford I know it's, uh, it's the mass it's the MSX MIT Michigan Duke Darden Cornell with an executive assessment test huh? so uh, NYU as well so uh, Columbia so with an executive assessment test, you can get uh, some very, very good school. Okay? Okay, yes. and this is all for MBA, you were saying? Yes, all for, for MBA. But she also got uh, a master in leadership from uh, from MIT, uh, from uh, Stanford, because Stanford has a master in leadership uh, for uh, mid-care students, okay? But but she got, she got the interview with MIT 
NYU, Columbia, Michigan, Darden, with an executive assessment test. So the EA uh, can work. Huh? Okay. And oh. she got, uh, she got the what? 158, 159, something like that. When our GMAT was uh, not even 600. So you see, switching from the GMAT to the EA allows her to have now in bits when she get nothing. Mm -hmm. huh? Okay. Okay. Uh, so, but basically, for, for the time being, but you have like six, seven mm -hmm. months to, mm -hmm. to, to get to the floor somewhere. Huh? Okay. Mm -hmm. And as you, you have to know, that school don't care. If you get a GMAT, mm -hmm. it's a GMAT. If it's a GRE, it's a GRE. If it's a NIA mm -hmm. test, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Now you have to see that not all the schools in the US accept the EA test. Huh? Mm -hmm. Harvard accept the EA test. Uh, uh, Chicago doesn't accept. Uh, Columbia. Uh, yes, Columbia accept, but for instance, uh, Kellogg doesn't accept, Wharton doesn't accept, UCLA doesn't accept, so you have to see what you can, huh? but uh, work out, the GMAT is, uh, is key, huh? okay? Uh, then there is, uh, so normal, there is Santosh, uh, Santosh, what, what do you think Santosh? So, can you introduce uh, hi. Santosh, yeah? Sure. Hi, Dr. Robert. Uh, so basically, uh, you know, to start with, uh, I am a 41 years old, uh, three years uh, undergrad in IT. Yeah. Uh, so my age, uh, you know, when I when I talk about MBA and when I see and when I read on internet, I see that you know not many people are accepted uh, after 35, 30, 34, 35 years of age into any of the MBA program. But uh, then Bupendra sir, he actually encouraged. And uh, here I'm, in, uh, I'm, I'm actually preparing for GMAT, not yet uh, appeared for it. So basically, if I tell you about myself, I have a 15 years of experience, seven years of experience uh, in working with the uh, top global companies like uh, Deloitte and uh, Cvent. So I was into Deloitte consulting, um, uh, especially into a strategy and operation, which is the part of their management consulting. I was into analytics, though I'm not from uh, analytics background uh, in terms of study, but I have headed a couple of uh, benchmarking uh, studies as, as uh, the head analyst out there. And uh, I was probably one of the few, very few people in Deloitte who got promoted to the senior consultant position within two years. So this usually does not happen at Deloitte. That was one of the achievement which I had. And then I started a business, uh, my own business. Uh, so I'm an entrepreneur. I have a real estate agency that's very successful, very profitable. And I have that business running in four different states in uh, India. So why I'm looking for MBA is uh, because, you know, I just want to take my company to the next level. And uh, Somewhere I feel that, you know, I, I might be, uh, you know, look, I, I might look at it uh, from the academic um, uh, prospect side as well. Uh, so, so that is, that is the reason behind it. Okay. So basically, yeah. so I give you an example, for instance, this one, Rajiv Gupta, mm -hmm. he was my student a long time ago. Okay. He's, he's, mm -hmm. He got a gym out of 750. At that time, I was not working with, uh, with India at all. He found me, I don't know how, and we work together, but you see, he got MIT, he got an MIT MBA. So there is basically, in your case, you have two types of programs. You can consider an executive MBA. Uh, for okay. instance, you can study uh, in Hong Kong, uh, you can study at Kellogg, uh, you can study uh, in, du in Dubai with London Business School. Or you can also consider, you can consider so either a, a Sloan Fellow program, and three schools in the world offer a Sloan Fellow program, which is a mid care program, you have LBS, MIT, and Stanford, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and you can also go for an executive MBA. You yeah. see that you have already, uh, or there's also Harvard that has a program called AMP, Advanced Management Program, okay? You have, mm -hmm. it's two times three weeks, okay? So um, if, if, if we work together through the draft, I will have to see what the draft wants to do. Uh, so for instance, we, we could consider Harvard, uh, AMP, I mm -hmm. you know, Chicago, uh, LBS, uh, I don't know, Chicago LBS, INSEAD, and such school as executive MBAs. And if, of course, after that, if you say yes, but I want one year off because I want to study uh, full time, I want to do something else for one year, uh, why not? Yeah, you can do what we call the Stone Fellow Program. So basically, and you have either the Stone Fellow Programs, 
or you have EMBAs. Anyway, that's what you had in mind, no? What did you have in mind when you when you joined uh, GMAT Insight? What was your what was your target? Hello. Uh, so I mean, uh, in terms of any school, I do not specifically had any any target. I just wanted to you know start. Uh, yeah, yeah. Practicing first, and then uh, looking at the kind of score which I get, and uh, uh, with the guidance of uh, Bhupendra sir, we I just thought of you know let 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 it flow like uh, uh, it is at the moment, and then later on we can decide uh, on uh, where to apply and where to not. So okay. Yes, of course. Yeah. Right now, yes. But, and what you have to see is that, for instance, you can apply to Chicago, to Chicago Boos. Uh, alors, for the Chicago Bush, you did executive assessment test for INSEAD, uh, LBS as well. Yes, you, you, you may need the GMAT or DEA. But the, the, the advantage is that the GMAT is a bit like DEA. The DEA is a bit like the GMAT, except that on DEA you have no geometry. Huh? Uh, exactly. Uh, let, me, uh, let me just... Uh, Can you explain the difference between the, the EA uh, and the GMAT? Yes, and yes. how you get organized at GMAT Inside, you give like private courses, well, well, when, fact, how, do you, do you organize, how do you get organized, uh, Bupendra, when, when they, they want to switch from GMAT to EA? What do you do? Hello? See, uh, see, yes, yes, yes. See, basically, EA, we know the differences, but usually, you know, for the first thing that, uh, in case of Santosh, let, I just wanted to add one thing, that Santosh is actually taking GMAT in just two weeks from now. Okay. And yes, and he has worked really hard. So we are expecting that he should be getting a score in the range of around 680. Which is good for a gig to MBA. Yes. Very good, yeah. yes. So so I believe that he should not have that problem coming from the GMAT side. And he would not need to take the EA. But what I want to tell you is that for some uh, executive, uh, for some student fellow program like Stanford and uh, NHC, uh, and MIT, a 680 mm -hmm. is probably not enough. Huh? That's why you will have to switch for the EA for MIT and Stanford if you want to go for uh, a certain federal program. So that's something that uh, you you keep it uh, you keep us updated, Santosh, because they, 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 there's a way there's a way out. Huh? Okay, but yeah, for okay. EMB, MBA uh, six eighty, uh, any MBA will take you. Huh? Uh, in uh, in SEAD, uh, NBS Columbia, whatever. After that, of course, you have to see the budget that you have available. But mm -hmm. in your case. Uh, me, for instance, I find that uh, Harvard AMP, the Harvard Business School AMP, is a very good program because it is two times two weeks, and it is on, okay. it is only in particular only eighty thousand dollars, and you and you're an Harvard Business School graduate. Okay, you have uh, mm -hmm. Harvard gives two degrees; they give MBA and AMP. Okay, so AMP, you are, you are an Harvard graduate. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, and of course you can say for yourself, you say I want to learn, I want to develop my network. I want to have a big name on my CV. Uh, Harvard, Harvard Business School is a big name. And at the same time, uh, I, have, I have a business. So if ever I live too long, I may lose quite a lot of money. But that's something we discuss when you come uh, next Sunday. The, you have to know the pros and cons. Last time you see Bupedra was with a guy who told me, um, I want to go to INSEAD and he owns, uh, he be, he's based in, uh, in Bhopal and he owns two hotels. So because we have, a, we have a call center in Bhopal, so sometimes they bring me people, I say, okay. And he wanted to go to INSEAD. So first I told him that uh, INSEAD is... For one year, you're going to lose a lot of money because you, you won't be able to work. Okay. And then he decided, uh, and then he decided that uh, maybe there, there would be another option would be to do, for instance, the... Uh, the, the INSEAD uh, EMBA that cost uh, you can get the scholarship it costs more than twenty thousand euros. First, you are not sure to get in, okay, uh, because the selection is uh, is uh, is less. And second of all, there's no loss because the guy can keep working at the same time. Okay, so that's something that is probably important for you as an entrepreneur. Uh, you see, Santosh can probably not leave your company, but that's something we'll be happy to discuss with you next Sunday. No? Yeah, uh, basically, sure. uh, I want to take one year off and I have a manager who can manage the, the business. Good. Uh, I cannot take one year off. At the same time, I want to educate myself. Then you can go for executive MBA. Huh? Uh, uh, but maybe you can say, uh, if I get Stanford, uh, I'm ready to, to give up everything to, to spend one year of my life in Stanford. 
Uh, then uh, there is uh, Sukriti. Alors, Sukriti, so one, one girl, finally. Uh, Sukriti. Uh, yeah, yeah, we have, right, it happened, it's the same thing. Uh, what, what is, by, by the way, Bupendra, the breakdown between girl, girl uh, and, uh, and men at uh, Jimat Insight? What is the, the breakdown? Oh, I didn't get the question quite well. Uh, what Come is the me? breakdown between girl, between men and women at your school? What is the breakdown? Hello? We have a look at that actually. Oh, yeah, 50-50. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I know that yeah. first, sometimes we have a lot yeah. of girls. Sometimes it's uh, it depends on the season. Alors, Scruti, tell me uh, uh, very fast uh, who you are, Scruti T. Yeah. Uh, sure. Uh, first of all, uh, good afternoon, Dr. Hubert Bupinder, sir. And Hello. I really want to take this opportunity to thank you for this valuable and insightful session. Um, the discussions have been really fruitful for all of us, I, I hope. So a little bit about myself. My name is Sukriti, and I have already completed my master's in economics from one of the top schools in India. And currently, I'm working with PwC US Advisory as a consultant. And my main domain is mostly data science analytics. And I'm working in digital contact centers these days. So um, yeah, I have taken one uh, GMAT uh, exam last month. It the score wasn't that great, but I'm hopeful that I'm going to sit for the exam again in the month of January. Uh, what to get a better get? score. So, Kriti, what score did you I get? I got a really, really, really less score. I got around 600. So, but I'm okay. very hopeful that I'll be able to touch around 700 or so in, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a month or so. So, I'm willing to take the test one more time because and when my target. MBA? MBA is for what? Uh, I want to start 26? my MBA in. Yeah. So I, I am right now 25 years old, and uh, I want to start my MBA program in the month, in I guess. September 24, so I'll be filling out applications in September okay. 23. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so, so it's very good, yeah. Uh, basically, now, uh, the thing to do, Sukriti, is that you have to, to improve your, your GMAT, huh? okay? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a 750, but as Bupendra said with Vizan, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that you will target uh, the M7, but at the same time, uh, you need to leave room for to uh, Michigan, uh, Tepper, uh, uh, Darden, uh, uh, you know, uh, even uh, even BU, uh, such schools, Georgetown. Huh? Georgetown is a very good school. Me, I have seen yeah. for instance, who, who got Georgetown with an executive assessment test. And uh, that was, uh, what, 155. Huh? And they were Indians. Huh? So there are possibilities. And Georgetown is a good school. If you get if you get Georgetown, you get a good score. Uh, so there's something that you have to, to understand is that uh, sometimes you're not like this, but I was talking to, uh, to someone who is famous in the in the GMAT industry, and for him, there's only uh, the M7. And uh, what I want to say is that uh, the top consulting firms, the top banks, uh, the top companies, Amazon, Google, they recruit, uh, they, they give job interviews at uh, at Georgetown, at Cornell, at Duke, at, uh, at Rochester, uh, at uh, Pepper, and you can get the top job working, uh, working there, huh? okay? And the salaries are the same. Huh? If, uh, if Amazon uh, hires you, whether you're a Naval graduate or a Tepper graduate, you have the same salary. They don't distinguish. Right? If they take you, they take you. Yeah? Okay? So basically, uh, okay. get a good score. Does I understand? Now, there's also something else that we have to see. It's the issue of the financing. <laughs> it's the issue of the financing. Uh, uh, you know that uh, we work very closely with an organization called Prodigy Finance. And you so that Prodigy Finance, they will yeah. target, they will, they will target, uh, now the conditions is that it has to be in a, a business school that is not in your country. So for instance, if you get ISB and you're Indian, you cannot get Prodigy Finance. And second of all, uh, it has to be a good school because it's a sponsoring in a way. Huh? You have to, it's someone who lends you money. Um, so we'll see, uh, we'll see, uh, we'll see what it gives, but that's why you have to, 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 to get a good school. Huh? Uh, as uh, Bupendra said, the top 15 financial time, We'll make it. it doesn't have to be Wharton, Columbia, we step uh, BU, uh, Georgetown. You will get we get financing from uh, Prodigy Finance. No? Okay, well, okay. Uh, that's okay. the thing. And of course, talk to Bupendra. You say, uh, imagine that uh, in uh, in six months your score is six thirty. Okay, and you have to say, okay, you can take the GRE, so maybe G equivalent will be a six sixty, uh, but it's still not enough, especially when you're Indian. Then think of switching for the EA. Of course, it will limit the number of target schools, 
the same time, it will help you uh, immensely. Huh? Okay? <laughs> right. Uh, so, of course, uh, and, and Bupendra, you agree, and if you read my post, I criticize a lot of test prep centers that are focusing on, on, one, on just one test. Okay? I'll give you an example, for instance, uh, uh, like uh, it was last July, I met a guy. Can, can you stop moving? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, uh, I, I met a guy last July who received a, a scholarship from a bank in in, in, in uh, Spain. It's called Caixa Bank. Okay, Caixa means uh, uh, well, means uh, uh, sa saving, saving means saving in uh, in in English. Okay, and then <clears throat> and then. Uh, he had uh, he received the scholarship and the deadline was uh, September October 2022 because the scholarship is is valid for two years and the guy had a, a two year scholarship in America okay not bad two years scholarship in America everything paid plane a meal uh, tuition everything was paid by by his bank called KXA, so it was uh, a quarter million dollars something like that. And then he was he was uh, focusing on the GMAT and his score was like 620, 630. Okay. And the guy was very ambitious, he was mentioning big names. So yes, I asked him to switch uh, for the GRE, and he could get an equivalent of 680. So by now uh, he had interviews with uh, Duke, uh, Cornell, Michigan, Darden, such schools. Okay. So basically, just sometimes by switching school, uh, switching tests, you can make a big difference. That's, uh, you have to see that most of the students that I have from South America, so in South America, students are pretty weak. Uh, they get uh, very good schools with scholarship because they give scholarship very easily to South Americans. I would say 10% have the GMAT, and 90% uh, have either have either GMAT waivers or um, or EA tests. Okay, and they, they and they get uh, they get top 20 MBs in America. Okay, so it will not happen. Uh, with, with you, because for Indians it's more difficult. But what I want to say is that now I've noticed a trend where, okay. so now, of course, work with Bupendra on the GMAT because what you study uh, on the GMAT will help you a lot on the GRE and also a lot on the EA. Huh? So I would say that the GMAT is, is a basis. Huh? It's like uh, if, you, if you run a lot and if you're an athlete, you can, you can normally you can play soccer quite well, cricket quite well because you have developed. Uh, you have developed your physical skills, no? Okay. Uh, so yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, uh, yes. You, you have a question, Sukiti? Hello. Uh, Sukiti. Yeah, I do have a follow-up question, Doctor. Um, yeah, that's so why we we'll meet you on like, following Sunday. This... We we'll meet you next Sunday, and I will answer all the questions. But tell me your question, Sukiti. Go ahead. Hello. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity, uh, sir. So, like, what, like, in your uh, valuable experience, uh, what would be the top differentiating, key differentiating factors in an application for a person who hails from an Indian origin, uh, apart from the GMAT score? Like, in your humble experience, like, uh, what are the top five key differentiating factors in an uh, application when you're, like, applying for it? Well, basically, uh, about the grades and the GPA. Uh, for instance, Ariane has a GPA uh, at Saint Xavier of 9.5. Uh, for instance, if you have low grade, it's an issue. Huh? The GPA, uh, the school where you graduated, because of course, uh, by American programs, they know what is IIT, uh, they know what is NMIMS, uh, they know symbiosis, because they have experts on uh, Indian education. So coming, having good grades, coming from a good education. The, the name of the company, of course, if you have a uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers PwC, it's a, it's a very good thing. Huh? Uh, the fact that you have an additional degree, uh, that you're also a master in economics, so you have a bachelor and a master's, that's something that would be appreciated, okay? Now, what else, what, what can you do to improve your application now? Uh, network with schools, network with schools. Uh, you know, they organize webinars, like et cetera. So it's, it's, by the way, it's something that you all have to apply. Make sure that when they receive your application, they know you. They say, okay, Sukriti, uh, I had an interview with her. She, uh, I met her in Delhi. Uh, she attended webinars. She likes our school. It's very important that you do that, that they know you, that they know that you like the school. I'm going to give you an example. The first student that I had, and at that time, our company did not exist. He was just someone like this. His name was Guy. Okay. 
and uh, Guy was from uh, Cameroon, so it's a country in a, it's a country in Africa, and uh, he had no work experience. He was finishing a, a master in physics, and his GMAT was 640. Okay, so not exactly a good candidate, no work experience. What he did is that he moved uh, to Los Angeles for like one month or two months. Uh, for, 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 he stayed there, and every day he was going to, to UCLA to meet them. Every day, meeting them, attending webinars, talking to schools, having coffees, etc. And they took him. Okay, and you know now what he does? He gives a lot of money to UCLA. Uh, he gives interviews, uh, and he hires. He told me that he, he has money that is doing pretty well. He hires one to two graduate from UCLA every year. Can you imagine? Okay? Well, but they know that they made a good bet. Yes. They know that the guy loves the school. So it's very important that you do that. And also now, Sukriti, as, um, as, uh, as a woman, can also be part of an organization called Forte Foundation. Okay? And the Forte Foundation, uh, they want more women in MBAs. So if you uh, decide to join them, they will organize a lot of private sessions with top business schools. And I've noticed that it is a big plus. Uh, to, to get in, okay? So I gave you, uh, so basically, but it's true, um, which is to say, uh, if you can say that I have the five criteria, let's say I'm now, and I want to, to send my application in uh, September, October 2023, what can I do that is not GMAT, because my GMAT is limited, that is not my grades, that is not my job, that can help me uh, help me increase my chance of getting in by 30-40%. I give them to you, network, if possible even go visit the school, you can do that. Join the Forte Foundation, okay? Um, okay. Uh, take classes on, uh, on, the, on, uh, on the Coursera. For instance, a lot of you who have a Bachelor in Commerce, if they apply to STEM programs, they will need um, some type of, of, of proof that they can, they are, they are not too bad at, in mathematics. If you're an engineer, it's fine. So tech, uh, linear uh, algebra, uh, statistics, uh, extra courses, on uh, combined like Coursera. That's something that they really, really, and, and, a, and a programming class, you know, uh, R or whatever, uh, that's something that would be appreciated, huh? especially when you apply for STEM programs. Okay? So basically, All this right. thing that I'm giving you, uh, little things, uh, but uh, they will increase your, your odds of admission by a lot. I, I find that too many students focus on the GMAT, focus on the uh, application, and finally uh, have not also met the essential. Okay. Uh, <coughs> according to me, I know that Harvard is, is a lot like this. Um, I know that when you, for instance, an HBS graduate, not Harvard University, but an HBS graduate, they give you a recommendation and he say if you know someone uh, at work uh, who seems to be good and wants to apply to Harvard send us an extra recommendation later for us is very important okay and you have to see that by the way historically and you know that the first MBA to be created was Harvard in, in the in the early uh, 20th century most of the students went to Harvard MBA and were recommended by Harvard graduates it was, there was no GMAT at that time. Okay? The GMAT was launched in uh, 1954. So they were recommended by someone. And by the way, what is better than a recommendation by someone who went to Harvard and he sees you at work every day? Okay? So, so the MBA program, has, of course, now it's more democratic, but they still have this idea that having someone from the school who recommends you uh, and who knows you very well is not bad. Huh? Okay? That's why, for instance, so many oh, McKinsey, right. uh, BCG, Ben get in. First, because the company is known, it's quite difficult to get to get a job there, and also because they have recommendations of uh, of top B school graduates. Okay, we yeah, remember that uh, he left now; he got retired. But in Paris, like 10, 15 years ago, there was a um, partner from Booz uh, Allen and Hamilton. School is called now was bought by IBM, I believe, and. Uh, uh, he, he was a Stanford graduate, and remember that if this guy would give you a recommendation, you will get in. Imagine, because he would only recommend people, and they, they trusted him so much 
that uh, you get your data from him, they take you. Okay, there are people like this. Okay, uh, and you have you have to find that. Yeah. See, no, but it's true. But life life is made of opportunities of meeting the, the right people, and I'm sure that you, you have noticed that at work. You say, I know that if I work with X uh, in my work, we do a good job because this guy is very good. I know that if they give me Y, it'd be a nightmare because this guy is so bad, I would have to do all the work. I'm sure that you, you have, you, you know, it happened at work, okay? The same thing happens, you know, you're going to, to meet the right people. For instance, you have met Bupendra, who is an outstanding GMAT teacher, and Bupendra, he knows his students, he can calculate their score, which is rare. Now, sometimes when I talk to admission uh, to, to GMAT teachers, they, they don't know uh, their students so well, okay? So he follows you. Huh? So you're very lucky to have someone like Bupendra who knows you, who follows you. And then uh, you can, by the way, I don't know how it works exactly, but always ask him for extra private tutoring if you believe that you need uh, you need more. Huh? And of course, if you have scored at least 600, you need, you need more. Okay, you see, Sukriti? So there are many things to do that are not, uh, not impressive, but that can help you a lot, okay? Uh, but that's why you have to develop your network. You have to say, for instance, maybe I'm going to meet someone from my dream school, let's say it's NYU, and I know that this guy is very well regarded by NYU. You have you have to find him. I don't know him, okay? But there is there's probably yeah, so basically, uh, but you go to the NYU Stern uh, alumni organization in uh, so there's an NYU Stern probably a business school club, and you, you ask them, huh? okay? Make 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 contact. Yeah. It's 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 very important, okay? Drouve, you have another question for us, Drouve? Hello? Hello? No, Hello? sir, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, because you. You, 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 ra you raise your hand. Huh? No, uh, I think that happened. <coughs> so, uh, so Pendra, what do you want to say to your students? Because I've seen that some want to apply in 23, some want to apply in 20, 24. They, still, they, they seem to be today not fully ready for, uh, for the GMAT. What, what do you want to tell them today? What, what piece of advice will you give them? My advice to them is first take GMAT, hmm. secure the decent score because only that will give you a chance and the confidence to apply to the decent school. And yeah. it doesn't matter whether you are applying to this year or the next year. It's never too late to do an MBA. Unless I consider the case of Santosh. I don't That's want to yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't of want him to postpone it any further. Yeah. Of course, if you're 33 <laughs> years old, uh it's maybe it's time to apply. If you're 23 you can you can uh, you can reconsider huh? yes uh, by the way there's also something to reconsider for instance you sukriti um uh you see why why don't we since you're pretty young why don't we consider an mim okay it's much easier yeah. to get in why don't we consider uh lbs uh insead esec you see uh, first, this, this uh, program will give you access to top jobs, okay? And then if you are not happy with your career when you're 30 years old, you can reapply for an MBA. And of course, your profile will be much, much stronger because you'll have a non-Indian degree huh, and experience abroad. Okay, so that, that's something, for instance, for Sukriti, uh, she can also consider uh, a master in management, huh, Sukriti, okay, this year. Sukriti? Sure, sure, doctor. Yeah, we'll yeah. have a chat that's, that's about that's something, this. That's something you have to imagine that you go to INSEAD. You see, when you do the INSEAD MIM, it's the same campus, the same program, and the same teachers. Okay, the INSEAD MIM, all our students this year they got a scholarship of 10 to 15,000 euros, cost 40,000 euros after scholarship. Okay, the INSEAD MBA costs 90,000 euros. Okay, and it is much, much, much easier to get the INSEAD. MIM than it is to get the INSEAD MBA. So, so it, that's something that you have to consider. Okay? Now, of course, you cannot apply to the MIM when you're 28 years old, but if I were you, uh, how much work experience have you got? One year, two years? How much work experience? Two years, yeah. Close year? to two years. Yeah, close to two years. If I were you, I would apply. I would apply. You say it will cost me less and it will give me the, the same the same job offers. Same job offers. Okay. Of course, uh, and if you want to do, uh, by the way, uh, Bupendra said with reason that uh, you can apply, he, he suggests masters in management in Europe and MBAs in the US. Maybe that's something that Ariane, who uh, 
we got offers from uh, from Duke, from uh, from Kellogg as well. So, uh, is it true, Ariane? Don't you think that there's a so uh, there's a, there's a so a very nice offer now in America? Um, yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, certainly. And yeah. you can all you can always uh, you know um, uh, do an MBA after after having done your masters from that particular from a particular school itself like for example kellogg offers this program called msms program it's a 10 month program uh, not very not very easy to get obviously because obviously kellogg carries a big reputation and uh, you know a lot of people apply there as well but this pro why this program is intriguing is because the first 10 months it's like an mim you study everything and then you get a job you work for two, three years without any hassle. Kellogg will take you for their MBA. And Kellogg MBA, who doesn't want a Kellogg MBA? It's an M7 business school. So Cornell has been doing this. Uh, I guess I guess Duke Duke has also started doing this. But yeah, Cornell and Kellogg certainly do this with their uh, uh, business masters uh, students. Yeah, you agree? Huh? So basically, uh... That's that's something that you, that you have to consider. You can even uh, study at Cornell. Uh, there are some programs do not want students who have a who have a, who have a bachelor in business. Uh, forgot uh, forgot the one. Yeah, okay. yeah. You, I mean, uh, uh, Ross Ross is one of those programs. Then there is a there is a there are certain programs at uh, Virginia Darden that mm -hmm. uh, that do not take uh, people you know who have a business background for the business masters program. Okay, so basically, yeah. that's something that you have to, to consider as well. And what is good is that, for instance, Duke, this is a STEM program, meaning that after Duke, after the, the master at Duke, you can you can work for three years in America. If you work for three years in America, you can stay in America, okay? Because they, they will give you a visa to stay if you have done well. Uh, you see? Uh, uh, you can also yeah. try Georgetown as well. Uh, Georgetown, yeah, any, uh, any STEM qualifying, any, any program that qualifies... Uh, as STEM will give you a three-year OPT. So if I were you, um, for instance, uh, for TT, I, I will uh, I will also consider some master programs either in Europe or in the US. Okay, and probably more likely in the US that are STEM programs. Okay, because of course the problem that you have for most of the Indians who come to study in in, uh, in Europe when they go for MBAs or for masters, that they don't speak the, the local language. Uh, and sometimes they don't have the visa uh, to, to work in the country where they could they master the language. Uh, you see that uh, if you study in Spain, uh, it's difficult to get a visa for the UK. Huh? Uh, because the visa is automatically given in the countries where you have studied. Okay. Now, I give you an example. I have a student called uh, Anushka who studied at Institut d'Impresa and was received a visa for the UK. Okay, but it was not an automatic one. She received a visa because she worked for a company called Puma. You know, Puma, it's a bit like uh, Nike, Adidas, but it was not easy to get that. It took her uh, six months, huh? okay? So uh, that's something that you have to consider as well. Okay? Sure, sure, sure. So basically, uh, for most of you, uh, uh, Bupendra, we have their contact information. Can I send a general email to to them or general uh, WhatsApp group, we have we have their contact information, Senya. Yes, 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 yeah. yes, yes. We have the contact information, and uh, and yes, maybe we should make a group uh, called uh, GMIT Insight uh, in the Center uh, WhatsApp group, where we would uh, uh, where we would share a lot of information. I have such group with uh, with my partner, for instance, in Spain. It works pretty well, so that we could make a group. Uh, Aditya, yeah. uh, are you listening? Yeah. Okay, so that's something maybe that we should uh, we should develop, huh? Okay. What's up, group? What's up, group? Is uh, so uh, Bupendra. So I will meet you with Bupendra next uh, next Sunday. Sunday. The, the Sunday. Event. And so it's good that I know you and come with all the questions that you have in mind. Huh? So we say to sum up. Uh, yes, Bupendra said with reason that uh, the GMAT is important now. Uh, you can apply with other tests, uh, mm -hmm. and you can apply also with, without any tests. Huh? Uh, for instance, in in Europe, if you want to do an MBA, IE doesn't ask for the GMAT, Wahoo doesn't ask for the GMAT, uh, and so forth. So and so on and so forth. 
second of all, uh, outside the application and the GMAP, there are many ways to improve your your uh, your application. Okay, your profile. I gave them to you. Uh, network, uh, take uh, classes uh, in mathematics and uh, and IT on Coursera. Improve your profile. Uh, that's the the thing. And finally, of course, the the, the success will depend on your ability to, to find the right match. Don't see too high, don't see too low. Identify the right match, okay? And for that, we can work with you because we have, uh, we have data about this. And apply to many schools and don't apply to just one or two schools. You will, you will probably fail. So if you do all that, we will we'll have, uh, we'll have uh, very interesting results, okay? Don't forget that also working with Bupendra, uh, we develop an expertise in India. Uh, we understand myself, I studied a bit in America. Kenya from my accent that I'm French, so I'm very European. So now we are developing with Bendra uh, an expertise in, uh, in international education that he already has, okay? But at the same time, we, with contacts huh? and, and with, uh, with proven uh, uh, track history with the school that we uh, really recommend you. Uh, for instance, the guy that I gave you, Rajiv Gupta, but he applied to MIT, but he had a GMAT of 750. Huh? Okay, that's why he got in. And for our first floor, for Stone Fellow programs, which is a Nokia program, 70, 750 is like an 800 for an MBA program. Huh? Uh, and also, don't forget that, of course, you have um, the MBA, but also you have Master in Public Administration. That's what I explained to, to Archit, for instance. Okay, consider other programs that are easier. Uh, and if you're slightly older, consider executive programs, uh, consider also social programs that are media programs. Yeah. There is a lot that is offered today by business schools, so just make uh, your choice careful. Huh? Okay? Hello? Are you always me? So, Bupendra, you, you want to add something? Bupendra? Uh, yes, yes, I'm here. Yeah, but what do you want to say to your students so that we meet next Sunday? After that, they, they come to class, and you give them their class, they improve their GMAT. Huh? Yeah. Uh, and of course, yeah. follow your, your teacher. Uh, it's something that is very important. You have noticed that people, for instance, who come to class, try to do on their own. Most of the time, they fail. Huh? So meet your teacher. If you have any question, ask him. Who better knows what works and what doesn't work? If you need extra material, ask him. Uh, ask him, okay? He's there, he's available for you. I know that when I try to reach him, he's, he's, he always tells me that he's I'm with my students, I'm with my students, so he's always available for you. Ask him, he's knowledgeable, and trust him. You know, if you decide to, to work with him, is that you trust him. And even if sometimes you don't do as, as well as you expect, it's fine, okay? Uh, for some of you, you have time, okay? And if you have to apply, uh, you know, we can apply to round one for 2023, but it can be also round two. It's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. Huh? Okay? And then we can modify. Okay, so I will see you all uh, on Sunday. Okay? Voilà. Thank you very much for talking. Thank you. Yes, yes, yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Hubert. Okay. I think I'll see you this evening, and then okay. uh, we'll see each other on Sunday. Okay, yeah? thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, thank thank you, you so much, everyone, for being here. Thank you. Thank you.